Of all the financial titans and philanthropists of the 20th century, none are more complex or mysterious than George Soros. Like Carnegie, J.P. Morgan, and the Rockefellers, he amassed billions through ruthless business decisions, only to turn around and give away most of his fortune to advance his own personal philosophy. He can move world financial markets simply by voicing an opinion, or destabilize a government by buying and selling its currency. He also pledged more aid last year to help people in Russia than the U.S. government did. But now George Soros is worried. He thinks the global economy is coming apart at the seams and that the world needs to be protected from people like George Soros. We may now think that everything is fine, but the fact is that the system is broke and it needs fixing. What you're doing is, is, is asking uh, some form of regulation to protect the world against you. Well. I am a player, and I think all players should be regulated. There have to be rules of the game. 48,000. 69,000 YUM. Right now, his quantum group hedge fund moves $14 billion of rich investors' money around the world every day, looking for profits and answering to no one. Soros makes huge bets on whole countries and economies. Last year, when he saw cracks in the Asia boom, he began selling the currency in Thailand. Traders in Hong Kong followed suit, triggering a financial crisis that plunged much of Asia into a depression. In the last two years, you've been blamed for financial collapse of Thailand, Malaysia, Indonesia, Japan, and Russia. Yeah, all, of the, all of the above. That's, all of the above. Yeah, yeah. Are you that powerful? No, I think there's a great misunderstanding. The prime minister of, of Malaysia yes. um, said that the region spent 40 years trying to build up its economy, and along comes a moron like Soros right. with a lot of money, and it's all over. He called you a criminal. It's easier for him to blame an outside force <clears throat> than to admit that they were mismanaging uh, their economy and their currency. The uh, French finance minister uh, talked about hanging uh, speculators from lampposts. Soros says the Asian currencies would have collapsed even if he hadn't been in the market. They were overvalued. He says people tend to follow his lead because he's been so successful. I think that uh, I've been blamed, blamed for everything. I am basically there to, uh, to make money. I cannot and do not look at the social consequences of, of what I do. To understand the complexities and contradictions in his personality, you have to go back to the very beginning, to Budapest where George Soros was born 68 years ago to parents who were wealthy, well-educated, and Jewish. When the Nazis occupied Budapest in 1944, George Soros' father was a successful lawyer. He lived on an island in the Danube and liked to commute to work in a rowboat. But knowing there were problems ahead for the Jews, he decided to split his family up. He bought them forged papers, and he bribed a government official to take 14-year-old George Soros in and swear that he was his Christian godson. But survival carried a heavy price tag. While hundreds of thousands of Hungarian Jews were being shipped off to the death camps, George Soros accompanied his phony godfather on his appointed rounds, confiscating property from the Jews. These are pictures from 1944 of what happened to George Soros' friends and neighbors. You're a Hungarian Jew mm -hmm. who escaped the Holocaust. Mm -hmm by posing as a, a Christian. Right. And you watched lots of people get shipped off to the death camps. Right. I was 14 years old. And I would say that that's when my character was made. In what way? That one should think ahead, one should understand and, and anticipate events. Uh, and uh, one, one is threatened. It was a tremendous threat of evil. I mean, it was a, a very personal experience of evil. My understanding is, is that you went out with this protector of yours who swore that you were uh, his adopted godson. Yes, Christian. yes. Went out, in fact, and helped in the confiscation of property yes. from the Jews. That's right. Yes. I mean, that's, that sounds uh, like an experience that would send lots of people to the psychiatric couch for many, many years. Was it difficult? Uh, uh, not, not, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, maybe as a child, you don't, you don't see the connection. Uh, uh, but it was, it created no, 
No problem at all. No feeling of guilt? No. For example, that uh, I'm Jewish, uh, and here I am watching these people go, I could just as easily be there, I should be there, none of that. Well, uh, of course, I, uh, I could be on the other side, or I could be the one from whom it, the thing is being taken away. Uh, um, but there was no sense that I shouldn't be there, because uh, that was... Uh, uh, well, actually, in a funny way, it's just like in markets, that if I weren't there, of course I wasn't doing it, but somebody else would, 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 would be taking it away anyhow. In other words, the, whether I was there or not, I was only a spectator, the property was being taken away. So the, I had no role in taking away that property. So I had no sense of guilt. Are you religious? No. Do you believe in God? It was actually probably the happiest year of my life, that year of German occupation. For me, it was a very positive experience. It's a, a strange thing, you know, because you see incredible suffering around you, and, and in fact, you are, you are in considerable danger uh, yourself. But you're 14 years old, and you don't believe that it can actually touch you. You have a belief in yourself, your belief in your father. It's a very uh, happy-making, exhilarating experience.